just wanted to ask you to explain for those people that have never heard about heard of it what uh, ponerology is and the role it plays in our society. Well, uh, the the term ponerology, meaning the science of evil, was. Uh, developed by a guy named Lobosuski, who's a Polish psychologist who studied the Communist Party bureaucracies uh, and various power mongers associated with it during the period of communist rule in Poland. And uh, what, what he found was that the kind of traits exhibited by these uh, apparatchiks were similar to the personality traits of psychopaths. Now, what you ask are psychopaths, well, uh, psychopaths are people who have no conscience. Uh, various estimates are that somewhere between one and five percent of the U.S. male population qualifies and more like, I think, 20, 30 percent plus uh, in prisons. And you know, one way of describing this as a psychopath is somebody who, um, you know, if you lock them in a room and they were very, very thirsty and, and there was something to drink in the next room, but there was a wooden door between and it was locked and they had an axe, they would, you know, a normal person would chop through that door. A psychopath would chop through a human being just as easily as they would chop through that door. Uh, so there's no inhibition against killing, no inhibition against lying in uh, psychopaths. And because military bureaucracies are about killing and intelligence bureaucracies and uh, politics is about lying, psychopaths have a big advantage over ordinary people in these fields and therefore, according to the thesis of uh, political ponerology, they rise to the top of the power hierarchies. As I described in my essay, Twilight of the Psychopaths, which was kind of a popularization of Lobosuski's ideas. Why is it important for Americans to be aware of this or, or be aware of and understand ponerology? Well, I think that Americans, uh, being a fairly uh, naive and good-hearted people, are very reluctant to admit the degree of evil uh, of their leaders. And we've had uh, extraordinarily evil leaders uh, and or you know, evil bureaucracies doing evil things for quite some time in this country. Um, just to take the last half century, uh, post-World War II, uh, U.S. military and intelligence interventions around the world have killed many, many millions of people and ruined the lives of tens of millions more in what uh, William Bloom, a scholar of American Empire, calls the American Holocaust. Uh, to kill millions of people uh, unfeelingly like this, to make the decisions that lead to these deaths, is, this is something that normal people would have a very difficult time dealing with but uh, people who are clinical psychopaths have no problem with it. And if they, because they're, they're predominant in these positions of power, are able to set the tone for what uh, kind of discussions that go on in positions of power, then this kind of psychopathic contagion infects others, and you end up with a power elite that's willing to do horrendous things. And Amer the American people just can't grasp things like, well, on 9-11, that their own leaders were complicit in, in blowing up the World Trade Center with 3,000 people inside to create a, a momentous lie that would launch wars that would kill over a million people and, you know, God knows how many in the future. Because we're not aware of the fact that there are these people who have a predisposition for evil and absolutely no inhibitions against evil in positions of power. We need to, to realize this, and then maybe we can set out to change it. Term schizoid state could uh, describe Israel, and uh, especially the rabbi, rabbis at the ideological center. Well, yes, Israel schizoid. In a, in a sense, I think that's true. You know, there's a wonderful film called uh, Defamation, which follows a bunch of Israeli kids going to Auschwitz and watches how they are brainwashed into this completely nonsensical belief that as Jews they are hated and despised by everybody around them. Uh, and you know, they're made into virtual clinical paranoids by the people arranging for this tour. It's a wonderful film made by an Israeli uh, who got great access to the Anti-Defamation League and, and to these tours. Uh, and, and you can see how that people who are brought up to believe that their group is endlessly uh, being you know, harassed and beaten up and, and you know, everybody wants to kill them off <laughs> would grow up being kind of uh, aggressive in response. And I think there is a, a huge split, a schizoid kind of split between the reality 
which is that the nation of Israel is, is quite powerful and is uh, extremely oppressive, in fact, genocidal, and that Jews as an ethnicity are probably the most powerful ethnicity personal for person for person in the world. Uh, about half of America's richest billionaires are Jews. Uh, our media is largely controlled by people who are Jewish and pro-Israeli. Hollywood is almost a complete en enclave of these people. Uh, high finance is, has a tremendous, um, uh, imp you know, they have an impact there. And then in organized crime, in global organized crime, uh, ethnic Jews are at the top, not, not Italians. And of course, you're allowed to talk about Italians in this context. You're not supposed to talk about Jews in this context, which is very strange. But again, it has to do with a schizoid split between the reality uh, of Zionists and, and Jews being quite powerful and not being particularly oppressed or discriminated against at all, and there not being any really significant anti-Jewish prejudice in society at all, uh, versus this, uh, the, this uh, bizarre delusion that there is. And this actually empowers uh, Jews as an ethnicity, and it certainly empowers the Zionists to continue to accumulate more and more wealth and power and to keep stealing resources from their victims uh, under the belief that they're that they themselves are victims. It's a you know blame the victim strategy, and it's working very well. Is there, is there a test we can run on people we see on TV on on uh, or, or like administrations that, that we could say they're a psychopath or not? <laughs> you have a rule rule of thumb the ten the ten top things that would point to a psychopath. <laughs> well, if they're talking at Fox News, they're probably a psychopath. <laughs> if they're uh, at high levels, you know, in, in the White House, they're probably a psychopath. More likely than. The yeah, yeah, and and you know, it's like it compares to prison. Yeah, right. The Thirty percent of the people in prison are psychopaths, so they're just a you know a higher a higher number in in these environments. Uh, the idea of devising a, a real foolproof test where you could just sort of tell uh, it would you know it sounds like a Philip K. Dick novel. You know, uh, are they really human or are they androids? Um, you know, it's funny because this guy, uh, the author of uh, uh, oh, John Ronson. Right, the the author of a number of wonderful uh, books uh, about these topics from a pretty you know he's not really on our sort of conspiracy wavelength at all. Uh, he's written a book called Them, and then uh, a, another book called The Men Who Stare at Goats. Mm. Well, he and they yeah they're both been bestsellers. He at one point invited me to travel around Europe with him, uh, meeting with billionaires and crowned heads of state with the intention of telling them we're looking uh, we're, we're studying the characteristics that make people successful uh, would you mind if you took this little personality test and then we would administer a psychopathy test uh, and to see if my theory holds uh, John did back out of that plan eventually uh, but it's an interesting thought you know how, how we you know, how can we diagnose? How, is, is there a, a quick way to sort of, you know, sh separate the, the psychopaths from the rest of the people? And I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I, was, I wanted to know if you know, have you heard of any whistleblowers in the last year or so uh, around 9 11? Anybody new come out? Oh, I, you know, I can't really think of anybody completely new. I know that a lot of uh, news has been made around the statements of Alan Sobrowski and Alan Hart that the Israeli Mossad did 9-11. Sobrowski is a PhD international relations and military affairs specialist who hangs around Army War College. I think he was the director at Army War College and he has spoken of conversations with his colleagues at Army War College and making it absolutely clear to all of them that yes this was the Mas a Mossad job on 9-11 uh, and that story was a big news in that portion of the 9-11 truth alternative media that's willing to cover that sort of thing. There's another section of it that, that is just afraid to talk about the Israeli connection. And then the same sort of statement was made by Alan Hart, the former BBC uh, foreign correspondent who is a good, you know, who's a personal friend of Yasser Arafat, Golda Meir, very well placed person. He'd done, uh, he'd been the point man for some uh, very important Mideast East negotiations and he knows the Middle East very well. And again, he came right out and said, yeah, the Mossad did it. It was 9-11 was, was a Mossad job. Uh, and these, uh, both of these stories actually, well, that one particularly broke on my radio show. So Brosky sort of broke on a couple of shows, including mine. Uh, and of course, these guys don't qualify as whistleblowers because they don't have any inside knowledge. But it was, it's interesting to, to hear people uh, voicing this. Apparently, there are more and more military people who are uh, coming around to this opinion. Uh, as far as actual evidence coming out, I guess the uh, NIST releasing 
a whole bunch of new material just recently uh, under threat of a lawsuit would qualify. Uh, there's, there are films apparently of uh, Barry Jennings and uh, his boss, who's that guy, Giuliani's uh, associate, uh, Michael Hess, uh, a Giuliani partner uh, trapped in, nine, in Building 7 on 9-11. And uh, that story was, of course, uh, covered up when uh, Barry Jennings was apparently murdered uh, right before the Building 7 report came out. Uh, Jennings and, and Hess had gone into Building 7 on 9-11, uh, headed for the 23rd floor uh, emergency command center where they assumed everybody would be. They got there and there were half-eaten sandwiches on the table, half-drunk, uh, still hot cups of coffee. Nobody was there. They picked up the phone and, and somebody tells them, get out right now. They head down the stairs and boom, a massive explosion just disembowels the building and rips the stairs out from under them. And they grab the railings and clamber back up. Uh, and were trapped, uh, unable to get down to the first floor and get out of Building 7. So uh, Jennings had told this story in great detail, then described how when they were rescued, they stepped over bodies in the lobby of Building 7, what looked like King Kong stepped in it. All of this describes the building being ripped by massive uh, explosions before the towers came down. And this then, and it also completely contradicts the government's claim that nobody died in Building 7. Uh, Jennings said he stepped over bodies in the lobby getting out. So uh, then Jennings died mysteriously. Uh, we still have no cause of death, apparently, uh, right after the uh, building, or right before the Building 7 NIST report came out. And now, just this year, 2010, right before 9-11, uh, the NIST has finally released a whole bunch of material, including uh, films of Michael Hess and Barry Jennings uh, like breaking a window uh, in Building 7 and, and screaming for help. Of course, that's what the firefighters, or somebody reported this to the firefighters, and that's why they were rescued. So this corroborates their account, and with further study, it may corroborate the fact that this all happened before the towers came down, which would completely blow the government's version of what happened to Building 7 out of the water. It would mean that there were apparently pre-demolition explosions, perhaps designed to uh, to cut some of the foundations, which is you know, in demolitions, they do that. They do pre-demolition explosions before they finally pull the building down. And it appears that they did that to the towers with explosions that went off before the planes hit, as well as Building 7, with these explosions reported by Barry Jennings and Michael Hess. And the, and the um, I forget the guy's name that uh, from the War College. Did, I heard him a little bit on the radio, but. I didn't hear him present any evidence. Does, did, is he presenting any evidence? Well, you know, he hasn't really uh, discussed the evidence much so far. He laid it out in very general terms. He said 9-11 uh, was sufficiently complex that it had to have been done by one of the world's leading intelligence agencies as an agency. It had to be a, a top-down agency official project. He said, well, what agency could do it? Uh, he said the CIA would not do this as an agency. Uh, there are really no other possibilities beyond uh, the Israeli Mossad. Uh, and I guess he, he, he sort of obliquely referenced the evidence that does point in that direction, um, including the fact that these uh, admitted Mossad operatives had set up to film the event before the planes hit uh, and crossed the Jersey Shore, and they wildly celebrated the destruction of the towers. Uh, filmed and photographed themselves flicking cigarette lighters in front of the burning and then exploding towers, uh, were later arrested with thousands of dollars in cash stuffed in their socks and determined that they worked for a Mossad front moving company called Urban Moving Systems. They were held for months uh, in the U.S. and then deported to Israel after uh, failing lie detector tests. And then they went on Israeli TV and claimed that they were, quote, only there to document the event which shows that they admitted that they knew that there would be an event, namely 9-11, to quote-unquote document that is set up their cameras before the planes hit. Uh, by the way, we've never seen that footage. Uh, whatever happened to the footage that they got when they set up those, uh, those cameras on the Jersey Shore? Uh, so that's just one little bit of, of a very large body of evidence pointing the finger at Israeli Mossad as being probably the lead actor uh, in 9-11. Uh, but of course, there's also abundant evidence that they were aided and abetted by Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Richard Myers, and a number of other uh, American officials.